All right, this is Michael. 24 hours later, we let the JB well cure on our uh, handlebars. I can show you right here what's going on. Uh, we did actually see this kind of fell over, but there's a handle brakes lever. We put the new brand of brake lever too, by the way. Uh, these ones fit okay. They're not the perfect fit for this one. You can see here uh, on the right side, it pushes the button okay. But on the left side here, I had to actually break out a little bit of the studs here. You can see in this area here. You can see how it barely only meets halfway there and it, that's just barely, it looked like it could easily skip it. So what I had to do is I had to, pretty much there's a little stud, I'm sorry, there's a little stud right here on this thing and it anchors down and it has a placement holder for this housing. So I actually had to break it off and I believe we use a little bit of silicone to keep it pretty much pushed back as possible. Uh, that way this button will tap and see it needs to push that to let know that the brake lever is being pushed off. You can see there, it's almost coming off. There we go, I'll push it again. See, it barely catches the tip. And it, it looks like it's almost going to miss it, right? So we did that one there. So these brake levers, they're nice, but sometimes they might not always be. I wish they would just make them in a little closer. I guess they're trying to make it a universal part where it fits a lot of scooters and motorcycles. So they look, they look pretty well. I think it goes great with my black and white. It looks like, again, more closer to the police cop car <laughs> color. Okay, so and then we also took out the harness for it. The reason why is... I stuffed this again with some, we call that some kind of nothing absorbent material, like not like paper or anything like that. It's more like plastic. The reason why I want to shove it in there is because I want to be able to focus on covering the holes. And I did that with JB Weld. You can see here it's been 24 hour already cured. So we're going to pre drill the hole exactly where we need it to. Just tilt it slightly from the original hole. This is good because we can still see the original hole indication. You can see that like a little, like a little round shadow there still. So we'll just go like something in between. The same thing with here. This one you can probably see much better. There you go. See that? JB Weld did that one. And then you can see the original hole right there, the little thing. So we'll go somewhere like right there. We'll we'll center punch it and then we'll just pre-drill it. That shouldn't take us too long to do. I'll let it cure a little bit longer because we have so much other things to work on. Uh, another thing I just want to touch base with you on this one is this one was the most important thing why we got the JB Weld in the first place for. So let's see how this cured. You can see here. Let's see if the teeth is still loose. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I don't feel any looseness at all. Yep. So it's now joined one piece. Again, we'll let this cure for 24 hours. But I was thinking, since we had to drop the engine down anyway, because I can't figure out if it's the cylinder head gasket alone that's leaking, or is it could be the base gasket as well. So if I'm going to take the engine off completely, I'm going to go ahead and swamp this out to, from an SSPG cylinder head to a Tata cylinder head, which means I have to actually use the Tata 57 millimeter rocker arm assembly. So we're going to do a lot of changes. I'm going to show you how to change out the retainer valve springs, uh, as well as the retainer uh, itself. Um, you can see here, you know, I just cleaned it a little bit. The engine's been sitting for since yesterday, uh, but we've been working on it. Oh, there's a little bit of JB Weld. Oh boy, yeah, a little bit JB Rell residue here left over from my finger. I probably went over here and rubbed it. That's okay, I ain't gonna hurt it. Uh, so we're gonna take our gas, we're gonna have to take all our nice exhaust plate out. We'll probably leave the wheel mount on because I don't wanna mess with that sucker anymore. Anything that we take off that there's uh, bolts like these, we're gonna try to replace them with nice Allen bolts, okay? So that'll be a good idea to take them off anyway. And then we're going to change out the carburetor from a CVK 30 millimeter carb to a PWK carb. We're going to change out the throttle cable. So we're going to do quite a bit of stuff to this scooter and see how it does. We're going to take out the CVT cover completely. And we're going to pretty much have an open, uh, not an ankle biter for right now, but just for testing. That way we can change out the variator weights. We're going to probably change a 2000 RPM to a 1500 RPM spring. See how that does. It engaged quicker at a le lower RPM for what we need this application. Now, if you're running like a heavier bike, like a Polaris Razor or something like that, then you need a more torque. And that's probably why people will want to go ahead and get to a 2000 RPM on those Polaris Razors. So, or, a, you know, Mad Dog equivalent to it. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and take all that out. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get the final touches. Now the handlebars that originally came with are still the stock sleeve one. And you can see here, I'm thinking maybe even upgrading it to the NCY bearing throttle, which, which I'll show you. See, these are the original sleeves that come with it. They're just like little, you know, plastics. And they probably eventually will wear out. But the reason why I want to keep it, because if you look at all my, see, this is where the switches is right here to start it. It has a built-in for the throttle sleeve. And when you upgrade to the NCY one, 
the throttle sleeve of the aluminum NCY bearing wrench, which I'll show you, it won't fit into these things. Um, so because they're a little bit smaller in comparison. So, so let's just say it was coming this way. See the throttle sleeve sits right here and it spins like there and the cable gets inserted uh, through the other end, if not on this housing, on the other side of the back plate, which is this housing right here. So that's where the throttle cable is right here for your carburetor. And so when you turn it, you're pulling your carburetor, letting the open and fuel mixture come in. So we've, we've already repaired that already. Again, on this side right here, this is where it also sits. Let's see if I can do it one hand here, you can see it. See that right there, it spins like that. So we're gonna change, we're not gonna change out this assembly. We're gonna keep it. That means we'll have to use this one because the reason why is if I bring this over here to the NCY quick throttle with the bearing, it's very nice, the NCY one. Uh, but it's made for if you're not gonna be able to use your own housing. And then we're limited space because there also our plastic housing just covers this spacing and enough for our uh, brake lever spacing right there. So we can't really just fit in a third little extended housing, which that's what the NCY one comes with. So I was gonna show you here. I'm gonna open this one up. This is all black one, very neat. Pull it out. And here's the two, uh, 1500 RPM. They're color coded yellow. And here's our PWK 30 millimeter carb, which we're gonna change the jetting of it before we put it in there. It's the same way we're gonna do with the Tata cylinder head. We're gonna change the retainers and the valve springs before we actually uh, drop down our engine. So it'll be easier for us when we do have it all off. We can just pop it in and, and you know, field gauge it and then torque it to spec. And then also we're gonna have to put a new gasket because once we take it off, uh, the gasket, um, if we need to respray it with copper spray, we have that here. We'll touch base on that copper spray. Uh, we're also gonna take a Dremzo also to um, take out our S1 bulge because again, they're not sitting perfectly in here. You can see here. See, they're not, they're not popping to its full potential out and we wanna get the most visibility for it to reflect. You can see this one barely, you know, tip his head out. See there? So we're gonna take a little Dremzo to it. This is what a Dremzo tool looks like. A rotary tool it just kind of spins like a rotary so we're going to take that <laughs> into play but before that i just want to show you here's a throttle uh, assembly there look how much quality this is compared to the plastic one see that right there you know this is uh, this is a good brand strata um it's a generic brand not 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 very popular yet but it's still nice solid than the, the original grip that was on there but the throttle sleeve they use is the same so but the ncy one comes with its own set you can see you can see the bearing there, it rolls. You can, you can almost put your finger in there and roll it. Very heavy duty. This is great if you're installing on a Ruckus who doesn't have that much controllers yet. Uh, the reason why I need to keep all my assembly in original is because the only reason is, is I really want to save that mirror and that's what I'm doing it for. It's mainly this, this mirror right here. I mean, I like the way it look at it, but it doesn't function. That's the problem because it's sitting so low. So we're going to try to get that problem resolved. And most of these things right here, if you can see where they're mounted at, here you can see this side of it. They all have a little port for an eight millimeter um, thread so the mirror can actually pop on there. So this is on the left hand side, but on the right hand side, same way. This is the same housing that we fixed here. So you can see here, it just usually is a female connector. You can unscrew this part on and then there's another female right here. So this is two male joined together. So yeah, it usually comes with an open eight millimeter thread. You can actually pop in your mirror so you can have your you know, indicator mirror there uh, for your front. But yeah, so all this assembly kind of interconnects. Unfortunately, I would have just, if I didn't have much controllers or the mirror, I would have just changed it easily to this one right here. Quick throttle, it comes with its own housing, you can see here for the NCY one. Very nice, not plastic, like this one right here. You know, this is, you know, hard plastic, but eventually it wears out. These are like CNC machine aluminum precision. Look at that beauty allen bolts which i always like and then another allen bolt here so there's three allen bolts this i think locks it in these two clamps it together so it comes in joins like this right here well you take this screw out and you come from the other end and they'll say ncy on there so you'll clamp this on your bar like this right here Let's see if i can do it one hand here just kind of hold it a little bit slightly so you can see here sorry the other way around but it'll come in 
it'll clamp like this because the throttle has to be open this face right so yeah so a clamp one like this like there then the throttle rides into that little rail there it has open for it so that's your ncy one right here and it also comes with that left hand one so the hat left hand one's just pretty simple it's just a rubberized uh, boot grip you can just slide it in put a little bit of oil though help you you know a little bit of just anything kind of lubricant to lubricant your choice and just slap it in there some vaseline whatever works for you so we're going to leave that in there so yeah this is might be a possible potential if you know if we didn't have the use of our mirrors attachment and not only that though if you lose it these things actually some of these gauges when you buy them they'll have like the brake assembly onto them if you notice mine is a two-piece it'll come with the mirror stand but it doesn't come with the brake lever the brake lever has its own individual see these disc brakes so that's why i just can't really swamp too much because I, I mean i'm limited to space like this much i can't even turn the the whole you know thing the way i want it to well i probably don't because i don't need to tilt it that far below you don't want any you know from horizontal position or vertical you don't want any raindrops just get into your switches because if your switches is tilt turn too much like this, for instance let's say we have this here this is our switch here and we're gonna plug this in to see where the bike is currently at right now we haven't fired it up since yesterday i've been dying to drive it but look at this kind of weather we got a little bit of rain shower here uh if you tilt it up too much then you're exposing your switches when it rains, it goes right into the circuit and you don't want that. So that's why it's good to actually drop down a little bit. So it just pivots the rain smoothly down. But at the same time, we just want to tilt it up a little bit, just be able to have our mirror have some use. And the good thing that we actually covered the original one anyway, even if we want to put back in the original place, we can do that. We have to redrill it and it'll be a much more tighter fit uh, versus what it was originally. It was getting loosened. Uh, it was also wearing out our, um, our little, um, little tooth here and that's the reason why we actually had to you know put a little bit more you know JB well back on there to keep his shape again but yeah it looks like the tooth is pretty solid so we're good there probably won't have any trouble at all so yeah so we're gonna go and get that teeth in there back um, that will probably be another day over we'll let it cure for another 48 hours it says it doesn't use it between four six hours but it's already hard as it is already, but we, we have other stuff to do right now, so we'll just leave it to cure for longer, uh, longer better. Um, and now, we're gonna go ahead and just put it in there, and we're gonna fire it up to see where the engine state is. All we need right now is just pretty much the brake lever to be actuated, and also um, we need the ignition start and kill switch on. So you can see here, it comes with like a six prong wire, or I'm sorry, four, four on this side anyway. The brake lever has its own two. So, there we go. The brake lever has the two right there. So that's why some of them come with six prong because they're attaching your brake lever switch to it. And this is the switch again to actuate the brake lever. So you can see on this side, there's no problem at all. It lands perfectly where I'm tilting this, see that? It, it's almost halfway, but it still closes it in on it. So we're gonna attach this right here. And you wanna, I wanna fire my engine at least once a day. The reason why is I want the battery to drain out, let it run for about you know a couple minutes at least. Okay, so we're gonna go and turn everything on. Okay, so the light's coming on and everything. Our alarm's actually still doing its job. So we can go ahead and push the unarm button. Okay, and then we can unlock it, of course. And then we're gonna go ahead and just, right now the brake manual is kind of upside down a little bit. When it mounts, it mounts like this. You can see here, even if I got it to twist to be able to see the brake lever, the challenge I have is, if you notice there, the brake lever is gonna be in this position right here. The banjo bolt, I can move a little bit, but not much. You can see here how each brake lever, sorry, where is my focus here? See this right here? This little handbar here, it positions the banjo bolt to actually come out a certain way. So this one clamps inward, letting the banjo bolt squeeze between this and the bar here. And on this side here, you can see, sorry, let me turn off my engine, conserving my power as much as possible. And you can see here, the arm actually comes from the opposite direction. It comes from behind. So this one is a little bit more freer, but still not enough. So you can see here, what it is, is they're trying to secure this to make sure this brake lever stays pretty much at a, a horizontal flat from any position. 
that way you're not exposing air to your brakes because again you could if this was actually open the valves and stuff like that the air could actually you know cause the effect of the air traveling back up into the tube of the banjo bolt so they want to keep this pretty much aligned vertical i mean and horizontal that's why they put that little protection bar here so you're not able to twist any position or mount it upside down like this or underneath it like that it just goes a certain direction so yeah i'm working with the limited space of the handlebar frame but also one thing is too when you put the plastic is sort of like a y-shaped plastic and it covers the front you can see here this is the back part of it this will come up like this and you can see here if i flex anymore there's another piece that comes from behind it like a brace and if I flex any more, the, the plastic housing here isn't going to close either. So that's another challenge we have. But we're going to do our best. So we have to hold down one brake lever again. If you look at the brake lever color, I was just telling you, you can see there? That brake lever color is yellow. And um, I'm sorry, yellow. Uh, yellow. Uh, green with yellow stripes, right? You can see that? And that's all it is, is right here, is the switch right here. The switch actually controls to let the solenoid know. Here you go, so you have the same thing color again. Green and yellow. It just lets the solenoid know that, okay, he has his brake lever down for security. Let's go ahead and give him the clearance to transfer the ignition power on here. So all this right here works accordingly from your kill switch to your brake lever, knowing the fact that it's coming down. See, this is the same thing, it's green and yellow. You can see here on, yeah, see on the other side here. So you got there, green and yellow. Yeah, see that, green and yellow. And then you have your, of course, your kill switch, which is your skunk wire. It's connected to a light blue wire. And also the same light blue wire, I believe is the same, I'm not sure, maybe it's just use the same color. But it's also connected to that orange and red wire. Orange with red stripe. And if you notice that orange red stripe one, it's also on here too. So these are just almost the same as your kill switch and your brake lever being indicated by the relay. So they might not just be left and right, but I think your brake lever is all the green, the green and, uh, well, you like to see a green, and green with yellow stripes, and then your ignition start switch, when you push this button right here, it's gonna be that orange and red color, which we tapped into our blue wire just nicely. So we'll see, um, we did tap our blue wire, let's see here, we did tap it here. We tapped it actually into the brake lever, to indicate the brake lever. So we might need to make sure we probably maybe have to move into the ignition start switch perhaps. So that might be a possibility there that might be the remote starter is not triggered yet because we actually haven't tapped into the wire. But if you look at this wire here, we still have the same continuity. Look how it transfers from, well you have your, sorry my camera's just off today. I think, uh, I think my camera's facing a certain direction. I totally forgot where the camera angle is. Oh, the lens, the focus. Okay, so if you look at this one right here, it's coming from the switch. Get focus here. If you look at that, it's actually what color is it? Is it that this is the start switch? It's uh, yellow with a red stripe. But when it comes on this side, just follow that four air, four corners there. And if you come on this side, it changes to the same, but it's still the same actually. It's orange and with red stripe again, see? So that switch right there is what we probably need to initiate and type in the blue wire perhaps. But we tried that before and still didn't start. Again, we're thinking something with the CDI ignition uh, fired up from the Benjing. So that might be another challenge we'll have to work with. So let's just go and start this up and see where it state the, our battery is. And right now, um, see where it's at. I mean, low or high. But let's go and take a reading on it before we even start the scooter. Just to see where our battery level is. Got most of all my stuff back in here. Okay, it's always good to invest in these one little small uh, multimeter here. Okay, so our voltage here is 13.14 volts. You got it? Okay, 13.14 volts. Sorry, I can't see it through that little piece of wire in the way. But you get the idea there. 13.14 volts. Do it again, just a Get a clear headshot. Okay, 13.14 volts. So we're gonna go and fire up the scooter. That's enough to still crank our scooter over. Then we haven't done anything. We'll just have to turn back on our gas. Our brake lights are on. Everything's working accordingly. Turn on our gas so we won't die out by being so lean, forcefully. And, okay, so we're gonna 
pretty much turn on our kill switch. When we turn on our kill switch, all we're doing is we're closing the contact. I believe one of these contact, the skunk wire is initiating with the green or blue wire there is grounding itself. Okay, and then we have that on. Okay, and we have to hold the brake lever. So I'm gonna try to do this. Okay, the brake lever is held. Now I can hold the brake lever, but unfortunately, I'm gonna try to see if I can squeeze the start button here. So let me try to see if I can do this with uh, one hand operation here. Okay, so I'm gonna put some pressure here on this end. Okay, so I'm using my, my tummy here. Okay, I'm gonna hit the switch, one, two, three. Uh, keys in the on position, or the brake lever's not pushed in, okay. All right, what it is is when you actually push in on it, when this senses this, there's no more push on this end, and it lets them know that the brake is executed. So that's why it's opposite from pushing it in this way, because when the brakes is pushed in, you can hear the brake lines open, right? So we're gonna do that. Push it in, right? Brake lines open. Turn on my kill switch. This is plugged into the harness. Okay. Or actually, this is the kill switch is on. I apologize. Okay, here we go. Woo, look at all that white smoke came out. Again, we haven't fired it up for a while, so we'll leave this back off. Yeah, so everything's good. You can see it fires up on a cold start. I haven't fired up all day today or yesterday. Got the right tuning down, it should start calming itself. Also, tires, these are brand new. We finally almost broke them in with about 100 miles. It needs to be before they're ready to go. So that way, don't be slip resist. It's not safe, so don't turn corners too well. If you haven't got your tires broken in, especially if they're brand new like that, you can see how it's a different pattern. This is new, and this is what it looks like when it's been used up a little bit. So 100 miles before your tires break in, before you make an initial turn. And then I remember a dominant reading, but right now I have it off, so I really can't show you. So let's go and make sure our battery's charging. Let's probe it in again. We're gonna take the seat cover off and everything. Uh, we got a lot to do, uh, so we're gonna try to get it done as fast as possible in a short period of time. We're trying to try to do this before the sun goes down. There we go. It's charging, it's 14.15 volts now. So it went about a volt. So there we go. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start. You see how it calmed on itself? See that? That's where you want your engine to idle back down to. There you go. More and more maintainable quiet. Again, we're gonna jet this. I think the return jet right now is in there. It's probably a 38 idle jet. And more than likely, uh, probably a 140 or 138 main jet and probably a 40 uh, idle jet. I'm not too sure, but when we take it out, we'll investigate it. But you can see here, the crankcase ventilation is building up sort of like, a, you know, moisture from the vent. This is getting hot already. There we go. Fuel is getting pumped in. If I turn this off, it'll kill it. Does it need that fuel? I put the low mark indicator there. You can see where my enricher mixture screw is. There we go, idle mixture screw. So you see how it's much more quieter? I don't want to be working behind it while all the exhaust and steam is coming out, so I'm just going to get it aired out a little bit, just leave it on for about 30 more seconds. But we'll just investigate everything, make sure everything looks good. Now I can't turn my light switch on because the switches are all in here. And the light switches, if I'm not mistaken, let's see. Actually, it probably is still on here. Uh, no, it's probably inside. That was in here. So I got both my mirrors in here, my back panel. This is just a brake lever. This is the other brake lever. The other brake lever here. It has a little retractable different gauge sizes. Pretty cool. I'm not sure it's gonna be a real function one. The headlight hasn't come on. I think because maybe our our harness from the signal here hasn't turned on for it too. So yep. Let's go and turn it off now, we're good. Kill switch. See, 
see how the kill switch works here. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go this to the right. There we go. One, two, three. There we go. Cut power. Awesome. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started on putting the cylinder head assembly together. And then we got our Prima rolling tooling kits. We're going to go and try to play with some of the roller weights. We're going to go ahead and change out the PWK uh, jetting to see what's in there now and we'll figure out which one we need to put in again We're going to go for 42 idle and 125 main jet So that'll give it a, a mixture of perfect lean and uh, Lean and rich not want to go too lean not going too rich. Oh, here it goes There's our light switch here So let's see if we can put it on there and see if our light gauge can actually comes right on because not making a short contact So this is so you can see here is a six prong So there's our switch for our lights Just pop that in there Okay, I'm gonna have to hold the brake lever again. Let's see if I could do it from whichever side. Just need to hold one brake lever down. Okay, I'll hold this guy down here. Try to anyway. What it is is I just gotta. What it is is oh man, this kind this thing fell off here. Yeah, these things are they're lockable. They have the little tab there that actually will get into the lock. There we go. Okay. Okay, if I hold this down right here. Okay, I'm gonna go and reach over. I got the brake lever held down. Turn on my kill switch. One, two, three. Oh, turn on the cheese on position with nice, huh? Okay. Alright. Let go of that brake lever again. Alright, there it goes. See? But the housing came on, our driving light came back on. So that was it. Sounds kind of rough. We have to give it some more gas. All right, we'll just turn off our fuel line now because we're getting ready to start dismantling a lot of things. All right, so let's go and get back into here. We're going to go and put this away to the side. We won't need uh, the throttle yet. We're not going to work on changing the throttle set because I told you already we need this assembly housing. I need the mirror mount. I need my brake lever. I need all the space I need to get. So um, the the NCY throttle grip is great if you have that room in your handlebars for it. It fits the same 7 8. So you can see here, this is a 7 and 8 inch. I can take this part. Actually, you know what? Let's take out the one with the, the bearing so that way you can see how it feels and rolls. So you put it in there. See that right there? It just slides right in. Now it's not hitting all the way yet because this thing is blocking it. You can cut this out and put bar in mirrors if you like. But you can see here. The ball bearing is actually doing the work. So it's really smooth with a little bit more extra grease. This thing should be really nice. So that's it. Very good. All right, so we're now gonna go ahead and get started. Let me go and set things up. I'm gonna show you how to change the, the valve springs. I'm, we're gonna put titanium valve springs on our Tata uh, 232 cylinder head. The same with the go on the two valve. Uh, we're gonna put that on there. And um, we're gonna change out the retainer keepers as well. And let's see what else we could do to it. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna put things away. Oh, before I go, I also just want you to know there is a lot of knockoff out there, so be really careful. You get a genuine one. I mean, they can copy a lot of things, um, but they have the hologram here. You know, they try to even copy that one, make sure it says hologram there. And then you also have your instruction manuals here. You know, I believe it's in English on the other side, and the other one's in Taiwanese. Again, NCY is a Taiwanese brand company. So I'm going to go and put this back in here. Great uh, brake lever, quick throttle from NCY. Again. Okay, we're going to go and get started on changing our cylinder head. And then we're going to tackle a lot of other stuff too. Maybe we can do the smaller stuff for right now. Maybe we can get the Dremsel tools established. Let's do that and then knock out our lights. And we can get a shop vac vacuum it out. That will be done with. That way we don't have to worry about the front one. Oh, another thing I want to show you what I did with the front one was I thought was pretty awesome. I changed out the bolts already on some of the plastic of the front. Here we go. In fact, you probably didn't get the chance to see all the thing here. I actually went ahead and bought some longer studs. They're Allen bolts. They were chrome color. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it, but I mentioned on the other video. Uh, but these are, you yeah, can see the back of it. They're still Allen bolts and they're longer. They extend all the way a good, almost another millimeter after this lug nut. And you know, we got a lock washer and also a log knot that we crushed. 
So this is ready to go too. This is done. We just need to pre-drill the housing of the back light area to be able to have this feed through it on both sides. So this will give us a little bit more. I'm not going to plan to sit on this to prove it, but you know, it gives a little bit more, you know, heavier duty to be able to put the Gibby top case. And um, I think it looks amazing. If you can see these bolts, they're Allen bolts now. Before they were the, I can see if I can find one. They were like these, but they were the green color. So this will be changed to Allen bolts too. The thing with Allen bolts is you want to make sure you get the right uh, size and length. So this one right here, we also replace it with some Allen bolts. You can see there, it looks so much nicer. I even did the hidden ones in here too as well underneath. You probably can't see it, but there are Allen bolts inside underneath there. <laughs> you can see the cheese head Allen bolts. And it still uses the same uh, female helping uh, support the brace. But this one flushed just nicely right there, this Allen bolt right there. You can see how it flushed. It just came right onto the metal. So that one's done. Just gives it a little bit more kind of look. And anything we take off, we're going to try to replace back with Allen bolts. You know, I'm not going to get carried away and try to replace all these little Phillips uh, plastic ones with Allen bolts. But the majority part, especially our CVT area, some of our engine bolts there. And looking forward to replacing this one here with Allen bolts. So it looks a little bit more aggressive look. So we're going to take out the seats and everything before we take the engine down. We're going to keep the rear axle. The only thing that holds this engine right here in the midsection. Other than, you know, your fuse line and your hose and stuff, you want to disconnect those. It's pretty much this right here. This brace bar. Right there. Unfortunately, you can't slide out here. It'll bang. So you have to almost drop this. They force you to drop this for security because this thing does not just slide straight. It'll hit this right here. And on the other side, it has one too, correct? So you have to go pretty much in one direction. Probably either has to... This one, you have to take the engine and sort of like, you know spring it downward just to get under this possible but this thing right here is a long rod so it's going to hit this right here and that's the same problem i have that wanted to take this off anyway because i can't remove my cbt cover to get into my cbt to be able to tune it so that's why i'm just going to leave it off and that will be done with that one but let's go ahead and work on the drimsel tool right here i put some silicone in here i hope it hasn't hardened too much where we can't get our s1 bulb out i want to put too much pressure here on the wires so you can see here these ones right here, we're gonna have to pre-drill inside to the metal area. Let me see if I can grab it. Oh boy, it's fairly, very, very sticky now. Okay, let's see. Sorry, my hand's gloving you first. Oh yeah, it pulled out, no problem, no problem at all. See how it creates a little rubber ring? That's the same thing with silicone, it's easy to apply, easy to take off. So you can see here, there's the surveying bulbs. These are the bulbs right here, 12 volts. 6,000 K again 6,000 K just means it's white color it doesn't mean it's you know kilowatts or anything like that it's the intensity of the color and 12 volts DS is it DS or yeah DS probably oh here's another part number here see there there's a part number someone's asking me about what the bulbs I was using and you can just pick them at the auto parts store the Sarvain brand they're a good brand there you go hopefully you guys can catch that 2780 CW, yeah, CW, MY, 